Hi, everyone, and welcome to our virtual open house presentation. I'm Natalie McKnight, and I'm the Dean of the College of General Studies, and I want to welcome you here, and I just wish I could be welcoming you in our building with some tea and coffee and muffins like we usually do, but we all know we're trying to practice safe distancing right now, and, uh, and so we're putting together as many virtual materials as we can to answer your questions. So the purpose of my presentation today is to uh, give you a general sense of some characteristics of Boston University and then how the College of General Studies fits into a four-year degree plan at BU. I also hope I cover most of your questions, but if I don't, I'm going to give you some contact numbers at the end so that you can call us or write to us uh, with your follow-up questions. I also hope that I can take some of the stress out of this situation for you. Even in normal circumstances, trying to pick colleges and universities is, is a stressful process. I've been through it myself with my own two children, and these aren't normal circumstances. So we're, we're all in this together, and we're going to try to make it work, and we're going to try to make sure that uh, by the end of your experience on our website and your contact with us, that you have a good sense of whether or not this is the right college for you. So I'm going to launch into some nuts and bolts about Boston University and then drill down into the College of General Studies. So as you may know, Boston University is the fourth largest private university in the country, so we're big. We have about 24,000 students total and about 16,000 undergraduates. Um, we have 10 schools and colleges and over 300,000 living alumni. That's a wonderful resource for our students and for other alumni to draw from in terms of networking, and we encourage that from day one when our students start with us. Uh, we are also a renowned university with fantastic faculty, Nobel Prize winners, Pulitzer Prize winners, National Book Award winners, Guggenheim Fellows, et cetera, and these are the faculty that are teaching uh, your students. So. Um, we are uh, internationally renowned and we rank very highly on uh, many rankings. So we have, uh, we rank seven among U.S. colleges for international students. Uh, we rank 27 among most innovative schools and colleges. And we rank number 18 for most employable graduates. And that's a ranking that I really want to focus on because everybody wants to know that when they come out with their degree, they can get employed. And worldwide, employers love to hire BU graduates. We're also very competitive. We had over 61,000 applications this year uh, for an incoming class of 3,100. So I want to say, uh, as you'll hear from everybody, congratulations on being admitted. It was a tough cycle, and you should feel very proud of yourselves for, for getting in. So as for the College of General Studies, uh, we are a two-year core curriculum general education program that is part of a four-year degree at Boston University. And we are nationally renowned for general education. We've been in the business of doing it for over 60 years. And people turn to us as leaders in many aspects of general education. So, so we know what we're doing. All right, so one of the things we like to say about the College of General Studies that I think will give you a good sense of, of what we're like is that we are like a small private liberal arts college within a large research one urban university. So you get the best of both worlds. You get that close community sense of a small private liberal arts college, but you get all of those resources of a research one university uh, in a fabulous city. So in trying to figure out how to convey to you what we're like and why you may want to go here, I decided to come up with a top 10 list. So these are going to be the top 10 reasons why I think you may want to come to the College of General Studies, starting with 10 and working down to 1. So number 10, if you start at the College of General Studies, you have clear pathways to degrees in every other undergraduate college at Boston University. So if you start with us, you could continue on into Questrom, College of Communications, um, School of Hospitality, Sargent School of Allied Health, et cetera. And when you continue into those colleges in your junior year, you will have already taken five or six courses in those colleges in your first two years with us. So you're doing the general education requirements with us, but at the same time, 
you're working towards your majors in one of these other schools and colleges, and then you just continue seamlessly into a college uh, for your major that you've already been taking classes in. Number nine in my top 10 list of why CGS may be right for you. You get an opportunity to study abroad at our college earlier than any other college at BU and earlier than most colleges in the nation. So our students start in January in Boston. They study a semester with us in the Boston campus. And then about 95% of them study in London for the summer. And they complete their freshman year in a summer term, enabling them to start their sophomore year right in sync with everybody else. So right on time. And they've completed a freshman year with already having an abroad program uh, under their belts which enables many of them to do actually a second or even a third abroad experience because they love it so much. And of course, in terms of employability, that global experience is something employers are always looking for. So we're very proud that we offer that to our students uh, right from the start. If you don't want to study abroad in your freshman year, we get that. You can also study on the Boston campus in the summer and complete your freshman year by exploring New England instead of England. Either way, you're doing fabulous trips with your faculty that are part of the curriculum. You go to museums, you go to historic sites, and this isn't just field trips, they're actually embedded into the curriculum, and your papers and your tests and, um, and your discussions are based on those trips, among other things. Number eight in my top 10 list is that we offer outstanding undergraduate research opportunities even in the first two years of your university experience. Not many people offer this experience to freshmen and sophomores. This is the kind of thing that usually goes to juniors or seniors, but we've raised enough money so that we can pay 50 or more students a year to do paid undergraduate research projects working one-on-one -on -one with our faculty in every discipline. So we have students working in uh, social sciences with a professor on books that are going to get published, students working in our labs on natural science projects that can lead to a conference presentation. And this is a fabulous opportunity for students to, to get to know a faculty member, to get to know a discipline and decide if that's the right thing for them, and to build the resume uh, starting at a very uh, early part of their career with us. Number seven in my top 10 list is that we have excellent professional full-time advisors to guide you through this full process. So as you may know, if you've been working with other colleges and universities, this is not a typical model for large universities. At large universities, typically advising is done by the faculty, at least in the first couple years. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But the fact of the matter is, Faculty seldom see advising as their top priority. It's usually third after teaching and research. I don't think that that is a good scenario for strong advising, and so we don't do it that way. We hire a full team of professional advisors with master's degrees or higher in things like counseling, social work, higher education administration, et cetera. And they guide our students through the process of picking the right courses in the right order, discerning a major, thinking about career paths, and drawing from all of the resources that the university offers. So it's a really unique model for advising, and it works fantastically. Along the same lines, we have outstanding full-time PhD faculty teaching our freshmen and sophomores. So our faculty are working full-time for us. We don't have part-timers. We don't have teaching assistants. We don't have teaching fellows. That means our faculty are offering the lectures. They're handling the discussions. They're doing the grading. They're doing the office hours. It's a seamless experience. So if a student is having trouble in a course, he or she knows exactly where to go. There's one-stop shopping. Your humanities professor is doing it all in humanities. Your social science professor is doing it all. And our faculty are dedicated to teaching. They love teaching or they wouldn't stay with us because they do a lot of it. And at the same time, they're active researchers in, again, every field you could imagine. Uh, they work on Victorian literature. They work on um, natural science history or natural science, civil rights, sports history. These are just a few examples. Uh, by the way, these are not pictures of our faculty. They are pictures of some of the subjects that they talk about. So because they're active uh, as researchers, this gives us the opportunity to connect students with the faculty on those undergraduate research projects I was just talking about. Number five in my top 10 list is that we don't just say we do a good job, we assess what we do. And in fact, we're national leaders 
in assessing higher education effectiveness. Uh, we've presented at multiple international conferences and, con and national conferences, and published on the subject. So what we do is we have composed a rubric that you can see on the screen here, listing the outcomes areas that we hope students develop in in their two years with us, and then different levels of mastery for each of those outcomes areas. And for each level of mastery, we have highly nuanced language that describes what that level of mastery is for that particular outcome area. And then we ask students to post um, on their e-portfolios, which are electronic portfolios, their work for every single course with us over their two, two years or four semesters with us. And then we train faculty to, uh, to analyze and assess student work over four semesters and then de you know, determine what level of mastery they are in each semester in each outcome area. And what we have found over about, about nine years now of, of doing this is that our students show remarkable progress from about 22% to 33% progress over four semesters in each of these outcomes areas that we're focusing on. And that's pretty impressive, but it's even more impressive when you compare this to national studies that have been done of student progress in their first two years in these same outcomes areas because there have been multiple national studies using tens of thousands of students. And very sadly, they always show that students in the first two years tend to show only 7% progress in each of these areas. And ours are doing three to four times that amount of progress. So we're very excited by that. And we think that one of the reasons we get that kind of progress is because of the team system we use, which is my number four on my top 10 list. So let me explain the team to you. We bring students in into groups of about 75 to 80 students per team, and that group of 75 to 80 students shares the same faculty for the first two semesters, and then a different team teaches them for two semesters in the sophomore year. The fact that the faculty are sharing the same group of students and that the students have shared classes with other students that they, means that they get to know students really well which enables them to form great study groups. They get to know the faculty really well. The faculty really get to know them really well. So it's very socially cohesive. But beyond being socially cohesive, it's really intellectually cohesive. Because since our faculty are sharing the same group of students, they meet once a week to talk about the students, who needs a little extra help, who needs an extra challenge, and the advisor sits in on these meetings too to inform the faculty about advising issues. And while they're meeting, they also share what's going on in each other's classes. This enables them to make interdisciplinary connections and plan interdisciplinary projects so that the courses at CGS are reinforcing one another. For instance, if in social science they're talking about World War I, in humanities I would be talking about World War I poets and showing World War I films, and in rhetoric, which is a writing and argumentation class, they may be looking at World War I propaganda posters. How were soldiers persuaded to, to enlist when they saw their whole generation getting decimated around them? What kind of argument strategies were used to enable that to happen? So students are learning material in a really holistic, interdisciplinary way, which really helps them to hold on to the material, understand it more deeply, while at the same time, we're teaching students to think in an interdisciplinary fashion, which I think is a fundamental aspect of critical thinking. We're all trying to develop students across the university who are good at critical thinking. But a, a key aspect to critical, critical thinking is knowing that when you approach a new subject or a new problem, you know, whether it's uh, sustainability or the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, you need to draw from multiple disciplines in your problem solving, or else you won't be addressing the problem uh, effectively. So that's what we teach at the College of General Studies. And that brings me to number three, and this one may surprise you, but I think our gap semester is one of our great strengths. Our students, most students across the nation, I think complete their senior year kind of exhausted, a little burned out. I watched this happen for year after year. Students would start their freshman year in September, and instead of being enthusiastic, they're all a little bit cynical about education in some cases, or just tired. Or it's, oh, here it's September, I'm going back to school again, like I have done for the last 14 years. So breaking up that, that model, giving them a semester break in the fall, 
to work full time, to do an internship, to take courses near their homes, to travel, to do a service learning uh, project abroad, or a combination of all of those, which some of our students have done, really enables them to, to come in in January, which is when they start for us, refreshed and more mature and more ready to dive in and make the most of their undergraduate experience. Since we have uh, in inaugurated this Boston London program and Boston New England program, and these started about six years ago, I have seen more students come in to their freshman year eager to get involved in campus-wide leadership positions. So our students start in January and they dive in and they become leaders in student government, uh, both within the college and across Boston University. And they've already done some interesting resume building uh, before they even start with us. So number two in my top 10 list is our alumni. We have a fantastic network of 22,000 living alumni all across the globe. And one of the great joys of my job is I get to meet with them. And when I meet with them, I hear of their fierce loyalty to the college, their desire to reach out and help current students and other alumni. So this is another great network for our students to take advantage of right from their freshman year, maybe even before they start in terms of finding internships, shadowing opportunities, mentorships, uh, et cetera. And our alumni, as you see on the screen, are leaders in a wide range of industries. I could give you 50 times as many examples, but we don't have time for that. So I'm going to uh, bring us to my number one point. I would do a drum roll, but I'm afraid that that might mess up my mic. So you can do a, uh, your own drum roll at home. Uh, the number one reason why I think the College of General Studies may be right for you is that we have a stimulating interdisciplinary curriculum that does multiple things. It encourages faculty and students to see the interconnections among their courses and to think in an interdisciplinary fashion, as I was just saying. It really addresses the question, what should an educated adult know and be able to do? And I don't think all uh, higher education institutions do that now. We don't want our students going out into the world with embarrassing gaps in our knowledge, and our curriculum is really very cohesive. It also hones the skills employers are most looking for when they hire. So there have been many, many surveys of employers worldwide over the last 10 years, <clears throat> asking them, what are you most looking for when you hire? And very few, less than 20%, say they're looking for a specific major. Most of them, 78% and higher, say they're looking for people with that broad-based education, and particularly, Leaders in every industry list communication skills as the number one thing they're looking for. Not specific knowledge in the field, communication skills, critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, and that's what we work on uh, in our program. And another reason I think our program and, and our curriculum is something that may be right for you is that our, our program, our two-year program, ends in a group written capstone project which is a problem-solving project. And you may not know this, but capstone is one of the hottest things in higher education right now. Every college and university is either scrambling to create one or honing the ones that they already have. Why? Because a capstone project asks students to draw from everything they've learned and use that to solve a real-world problem. And this, of course, is exactly what we need our educated adults to be able to do. And we've been doing this for 60 years, so we're international leaders in how to develop a good capstone project, too. So our students leave us after the sophomore year, having done this amazing, really impressive capstone project, which is a real jaw breaker, uh, jaw dropper, sorry, um, when they do interviews. Because people can't believe that a you know, 19, 20-year-old took on a project of this kind of sophistication uh, in the middle of their college career. Our curriculum also addresses all of the hub general education requirements. So the Boston University has a universal general education requirements. It doesn't matter whether you start at my college, College of General Studies, or College of um, Communications, or Questum School of Business. All students have to fulfill Boston University's general education requirement. And our program at College of General Studies happens to be one of the most efficient and effective ways of handling those requirements because, as you can see on the screen, all of our courses have been approved for three hub areas each, which means when students are done with us, they've basically fulfilled most of their requirements, leaving only a couple that they are supposed to fulfill within their major requirements in their last two years. 
So I've been focusing a lot on you know, fulfilling requirements and, and being employable, uh, but one thing I want to underscore, and all of my faculty would want to underscore for you, is that, that we believe that education isn't just about checking off requirements or about making a living, although we know that that's important. It really is about making a life, a rich, purposeful, enjoyable life, and an education is a, a really important part in doing that. We also feel that education is kind of a responsibility for adults, that it's kind of our joint responsibility as educated adults to carry into the next generation the best ideas, knowledge, creative works of the past so that we can use that in forging a better future. And we hope we get to share that future with you. So before I sign off, just one more thing. Follow CGS on Instagram. There's our line. So follow us and then direct message us and you could be enrolled in a giveaway, a raffle, and win a prize and we'll give out more than one of them. So it's, it's, um, it's worth doing and easy enough to do and it's a great way for us to update you about what's happening at the college is through Instagram. And our students do Instagram takeovers so that you can be asking them questions and, uh, and hearing directly from them about the student experience. Also, I want to underscore that I've got a phone number here and uh, uh, an email address. So if I haven't answered your questions, please call us, please email us, we will get back to you. We want to hear from you. Thank you so much and best wishes, stay healthy, good luck.